In the New Testament, there was no church that was more generous than the Macedonian church. In 2 Corinthians 8, 1-5, Paul tells us how their joy overflowed in rich generosity. The encouraging thing for us about this joy was the circumstances it came from. Paul explains that they were in the midst of severe trials and extreme poverty, and it was in these times that God gave them this overflowing joy that resulted in generosity. Trials and suffering couldn't shake these believers because they didn't care about stuff. Their secret was not what belonged to them, but who they belonged to. And every one of us will also face trials and sufferings at some point in our lives. And just like the Macedonians, we must decide who or what we will trust in when they do arise. So let's look at three truths that the Macedonian believers teach us that will help us obtain the same joy and generosity they had in their extreme poverty. First, nothing can shake the joy of the generous. Paul's description of the Macedonian state of affairs should not be taken lightly. Severe tests of affliction and extreme poverty. These circumstances were more than minor setbacks, yet God gave them the joy to not only make it through, but to give generously in the process. Secondly, generosity flows from a heart of self-sacrifice, not self-preservation. The motivation of giving is not to give in order to get. Instead, just like the Macedonians, it begins with our surrender to God and flows from His joy as we trust in Him. And finally, Biblical giving comes from grace, not the law. Tithe, or 10%, is the biblical starting point for giving. Jesus validated this in Matthew 23, but as the Macedonians showed us, their giving was a direct result of the joy they found in God's grace, not from an obligation to give. These verses model for us the response God is looking for when we look at our financial situation. Paul tells us that the Macedonians gave themselves first to the Lord, and in the same way we should approach our finances by first affirming or reaffirming our commitment to trust God's promises. And secondly, we are told the Macedonians gave. Their generosity was the proof of where their joy really came from, and in the same way our giving echoes what our hearts are trusting in. Paul's words to the church in Ephesus are the same words I would like to share with you, Emmanuel, as we consider our tithes and our offerings for our 2018 ministry program. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in Jesus our Lord and your love for all of God's people, I cannot stop giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I cannot stop thanking Jesus for each of you. For over 160 years, we have been faithfully connecting people to Jesus. How amazing is that? We have been worshiping in downtown Grand Rapids before it was even in downtown. But what gets me even more excited is to see what Jesus has been doing and is doing in each of you. Thank you for your dedication for connecting people to Jesus. In just eight years, we took our mortgage from $1.3 million to less than $80,000. Because of your generous giving and your clear focus, we were able to refinance our mortgage so that we could call Natalie and myself to be your associate pastor. And for the necessary building upgrades and upkeep, such as our dividing wall in our learning center and our new front doors on our sanctuary and waterproofing the outside of our building. Ohana means family, and family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. That is why we, as Emmanuel, are working hard to support our Emmanuel family. Our lay ministers will be calling to reach out to pray and encourage each of you. While we're working hard to prepare for our family Sunday school hour, and why, as a staff, we've been praying for you each individually. Jesus has blessed Emmanuel with a clear mission to connect people to Jesus and have united us around a vision, 100% serving and 100% growth. May Jesus continue to bless us with joy as we follow him. Thank you for your faith in Jesus, for your love for all of God's people. Thank you for connecting people to Jesus. Pastor Tyler just spent a few minutes talking about recent history here at Emmanuel. 
And there's been some great things, some great things of connecting people to Jesus, accomplishments in growth and accomplishments in service. Another recent milestone here at Emmanuel was almost two years ago to the day when we kicked off our vision. That vision you can read on the pens in the pew in front of you or in the monthly newsletter. Pastors talk about it quite a bit. And what is that vision? By 2027, 100% of our members will be intentionally and joyfully serving in God's kingdom. And by 2027, we will experience a 100% increase in worship attendance. But why this vision? There's four reasons. Number one, it celebrates our core values and our core beliefs with a spotlight on intentionally sharing the love of Jesus, spiritual growth, and that we believe that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sanctified and redeemed His Son so that we may both serve Him and all of His people. Another reason is um, it's uncomfortable. This vision is uncomfortable. Pastor Tyler talked about some great accomplishments recently, and that's awesome. But we know that great things don't come from comfort zones. We also think about Dietrich Bonhoeffer who quoted, we need to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. Another reason for this vision is prayer. Um, we've asked the Holy Spirit, guide us. Where do you want to take this church? Where do you want to take the bride um, for serving your kingdom? And there's a great verse, Psalm 32, 8, where he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, and I will counsel you with my loving eye over you. Not only will he teach us, he'll counsel us, but he is with us, with that loving eye to take us to that next step for the vision. And another reason for this vision, it's discussions with you. Broad, dreaming conversations with the congregations and the leaders of the church and honest discussions of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That's why the vision. Now, Pastor Bickle next is gonna talk about how do we get from A to Z, or I'd like to say from D to Z, as we are now in the third year of this vision. It's talking about a path that will take us from the church into places we can't expect. Um, it's talking about a path where we can engage your gifts for his kingdom. And it's a path that will allow us to interrupt others with the love of Jesus. God bless. Thanks so much for being a part of our 2017 stewardship campaign here at Crescent Park, right by the church. And then I love this spot because it reminds me of Jesus. And he looked over Jerusalem, he wept because the people weren't connected to him underneath his wing. We as a congregation have that opportunity of being that wing of Christ, connecting people to Jesus. Uh, and our work is truly important and urgent. A couple years ago, the board of directors said 100% serving is one of our parts of our vision. 100% serving, and so in 2018, we need to have a servanthood director, someone who will champion that 100% serving in our midst, encourage us, equip us, and, and love us um, as we serve. And also the board said 100% growth in our worship attendance. We've been praying about what does that mean? Maybe we need to have services in, in Spanish or in different languages. And God has answered that prayer. Pastor Leon and his family want to proclaim the love of Jesus Christ in the French language. And so we work towards that in 2018, 100% serving and 100% growth. And our work is urgent. In today's staff devotion, we read that there's 2.2 billion Christians in the world. That means there's 5.3 billion who don't know the love of Jesus Christ. And our, so our work is urgent. I ask you to um, just consider, as we talk about the stewardship goals for this coming year, to pre please pray about that. Um, be generous as the Lord leads you and guides you. And thanks for considering how we can connect people to Jesus.